Hi, I'm Tony Levin. I'd like to share with you my King Crimson print collection. This is a print titled Bill Bruford, Bristol, 1981. It's Bill backstage doing what he does, practicing in a very funky rock club backstage. I love the feeling of it, I love the mood of it, and, and it captures something of the life of my longtime good friend and collaborator, Bill Bruford. I don't recall the name of the club. I looked high and low to try to research it. I do know it was in Bristol, and I know it was in 1981. We were just beginning to tour, first as Discipline and then as King Crimson, and so this would have been in one of our very earliest uh, shows of the incarnation, of that incarnation of King Crimson. And we were all practicing backstage in our dressing rooms, and I was uh, lucky to capture Bill in this one. I love the mood of this. I love the blurred drumsticks as he's practicing. I love the kind of almost like there's no hope look of these uh, graffiti-laden backstage dressing rooms, quote unquote dressing rooms in rock clubs, the way it was then, and it's that way sometimes now. But this, this particular club in Bristol really had a distinctive look of the backstage. Bill and I have had a long history together. We met in uh, 1980 when we formed this incarnation of King Crimson. I was thrilled to be in it. And I learned a lot about progressive rhythm playing in rock from Bill, from being in a band with Bill. The first year in the band, really, I, I kind of would base my bass parts on what he played on drums and his unique approach to, to w the way he found the part. I was being an American-based bass player. I would approach things differently of playing a solid, typical bass part um, instinctively. And Bill taught me, without saying a word to me, he taught me a different way to look at the music, to, find a, to try to find a part that nobody else would have played, a part that's unique, a part that takes the music someplace different than it would be taken to normally. And that's what I've done ever since in King Crimson and in many other contexts. And I thank Bill a great deal for that, for kind of showing me the way and mentoring me and for hanging in with me while I wasn't so good at doing that. This picture from the very early months of the band touring kind of evidences the way it was, gritty, dark, uh, funky backstage areas. And uh, that's partly, partly the reason I think so much of this picture. This print is called Perkins Palace Marquis, 1981. Perkins Palace is a theater in Pasadena, California, and King Crimson was playing there on our first U.S. tour after I joined the band in 1981. The Discipline album is the music we were playing. We were having a great time. Uh, I like the mood of this picture. It's not the mood that the band had, but it's sometimes the mood that clubs have or theaters. Really, I took the picture after the show as we were packing up. The show wasn't underattended, as, as the picture implies, but it has a great mood, and the, the photo ended up being a very good way for me to commemorate the memory of having played that concert. We were very happy on that tour to have the audience so supportive of our new music, our challenging music, our progress, very progressive music, and the fact that King Crimson was doing different music than it had done before and in, in a different way. That's, in a way, the nature of King Crimson, but it's not what all the fans want. Of course, fans would like to hear the piece that they love that first made them love the band, and it's a challenge for those audience members or, or fans of the band. It's a challenge to, to go to a concert that won't have that kind of uh, encores, and that's what King Crimson does. We, 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 under Robert Fripp's leadership, we try to progress and move forward and do what we're doing, and uh, we challenge the audience as we challenge ourselves, because we challenge ourselves both as musicians and as a band to not necessarily do what we did before or not do it in the same way as we did it before and to keep moving forward in our musical adventure, our musical journey. And that Robert is really the arbiter of whether it is King Crimson, whether it's worthy of being the direction for King Crimson. And if it is, he encourages us to go in that direction. If not, we change direction in rehearsals. We do a lot of rehearsing and we do a lot of changing of directions and trying out ideas. Sometimes they work, sometimes not so well. And that's part of what King Crimson is. Every print is signed and numbered and comes with a certificate of authenticity. These are archive quality prints that will last for generations.